Can you build a PC with $500? Yes. Can you build a PC with $500 only using new parts? Yes. Should you build a PC with $500? Yeah. Should you build a PC with $500 only using new parts? Uh, it depends. But I did do that. And this is gonna be a weird video where uh, the timeline's gonna flip. We're gonna go back in time, forward in time, back in time, forward in time, because this is the very end of the video that I'm editing right now. I'm currently editing it. I decided to film this part, but I knew I was gonna do this. So I'm gonna send you back to past song to talk about the build itself. Go ahead. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ah. All right, thanks Future Song. The past song here, by the way, we've cut a lot of good things actually for this build. I'm pretty impressed with what I was able to find with the $500 budget. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally don't like to watch building PC videos for fun, especially when it's not really a big part of this whole video, right? It's just about what you could get for $500 when all these parts are brand new. So I do have all of these products listed on my uh, notes app on my phone. I don't know if the prices will change by the time this video is uploaded. I hope not. Also, I didn't set up the Amazon affiliate link, so I don't really make money from using these links. I don't know if I'll even have a link. If there's a link, there's a link, but I doubt that I make money off of it. I might just have like CPU equal. So this video is fully unbiased. I'm not making a cent from you guys ordering these things, so good for me. Yeah. Now starting off with the CPU, I did get myself the Ryzen 5 3600. And I will talk about the alternatives if you go with used products because the pricing is so much better in the end of the video. But for this kind of price, I mean the Ryzen 5 3600 has 6 cores, 12 threads. It does come with the CPU cooler. And for the motherboard, I did get the ASRock B450M HDV. This is a $60 micro ATX motherboard. It isn't anything crazy, but if you do get this specific motherboard, it doesn't come with the Wi-Fi card. So you will have to invest in something like this. However, I'm not putting that as part of the budget because if you do have the capability of playing with an Ethernet connection, you won't really need to buy one. And honestly, these Wi-Fi adapters are pretty cheap. You can get either one for your PCIe slot or you could just get like a USB one instead. Now DDR4 RAMs are very cheap nowadays. These specific ones are the silicon powered DDR4 RAM. These are 16 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes each, clocking at 3200 megahertz. Or MTS to be a little more accurate. For the GPU, I did decide to go with the 1660 Super. Now let's be completely honest, if you are on a $500 budget for your PC, you're not going to be trying to play 1440p games, but the 16 60 Super is honestly great for 1080p gaming. Now for storage, I did pick up a 500 gigabyte SSD. This is the PCI 3.0 NVMe M.2 SSD. However, storage is something that you could upgrade in the future, especially because the prices of SSDs have decreased tremendously in the past few years. Now powering all of this, I actually do have a very budget PSU. No, this isn't platinum. No, it isn't gold. It's not silver. It's not bronze. I don't even know. It's just like... 80 plus. This is like the worst, I think. <laughs> just know when it comes to PSU ratings, it's just rating the efficiency of the power supply. And Corsair has a really good explanation for this that I'll be showing you guys on the screen right now. I would typically stay close to silver and gold for myself, but with the $500 budget, uh, we might have to stick with this. It has all the cables that we really need, but most importantly, this is $39. But lastly, for the case, I did pick up the Antec AX61 Mid Tower ATX gaming case with mesh front panel, RGB fans, tempered glass. Uh, ATX gaming case. Okay, that's what you all have to know. Now, obviously, this is like a $65 case, so it's nothing really special. It's pretty cheap. It has two USB 2.0 ports on top and one USB 3.0. They do have dust filters, which is nice. Uh, it's a lot of flex here, I don't really like, but we have extra space for AIO. So if we upgrade in the future, I could probably add some more fans, especially because they have four fans here. It is three intake and one exhaust. I do like to have it pretty equal, but this is fine. The uh, parts that we are using for this PC isn't really that hot. But one thing I am curious about is the uh, back panel because I want to see if it's good. Honestly, this isn't terrible. At least they give you some wires. Yeah, I mean, we could work with this. Ooh. It can be screws too, nice. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and build this and then the future song of that timeline will be here to tell you about things like performance, the good, the bad, do I recommend, and alternatives. 
or maybe I'll be the feature feature song. We'll, we'll see. All right, everything's done. And if you're wondering what this is right here, that is my main PC. I just have it up for the second monitor to make it look good. Now, if you guys are wondering why I didn't have the whole building PC part, or I'm just yapping, but I already said, you know, why. Now, the next few parts of the video is gonna be split up like this. I'm gonna be testing a lot of different games at 1080p. Then we're gonna talk about the good, the bad. And there's a lot of good and a lot of bad. Then I'm gonna be giving you guys some recommendations on what I would do if I was able to use use product because the use market is very good right now. And finally, my final thoughts on whether it's worth building this, who this is for, and if you should build it. All right, three weeks later, I decided to change the entire setup video on that soon but we will be going over five different games and three of them are going to be esports titles that i really don't think that this pc will have a hard time running then i added three more intensive games that are kind of harder to run that i don't really think this pc can to show you guys what you guys will be expecting also i've already uploaded shorts about this computer and a lot of comments are saying that for a budget like this you should look into the used market and i completely agree which is why i'm going to be adding that part in the end and then for a future video i'm going to be making a whole pc using used parts and the used market to show you guys the difference and the benefit of going into that but starting off with the game of valorant which I think would be the easiest thing to run. A very CPU intensive game, we can see around 240 FPS. But if I'm being honest, the performance might vary from map to map. Now this game is really easy to run. And if you're trying to go pro in a game like this, just know even a very budget PC like this would be good enough. Especially because for people within this price range are gonna be looking at monitors with like 165 Hertz. And as someone who played most of my hours in Valorant using 165 refresh rate, you'll be more than good, I promise. When we place most of the job onto the CPU with the performance setting, we could expect over 220 FPS. And if you're just a sweaty player trying to get the max amount of FPS, this is completely fine to play on. But in medium settings, this does go down to around 150. But when we jump into epic settings, you will notice that the GPU is handling most of the work now. And yes, I've been looking at this water thingy for like 20 minutes. We can expect around 60 to 80 FPS, but honestly, this game really isn't something that you're trying to max out the graphics since it doesn't really have a really aesthetically pleasing look to it. The last esport title I wanted to test was Rainbow Six Siege. At medium settings, we can expect around 160 to 90 FPS. The lesson here is that esports titles like these are really easy to run. If you're someone who wants to be the best in these games, maybe go pro, please understand that you do not need a $3,000 PC to get there. Just start off with a PC like this, and slowly as you make money, upgrade parts later. But this PC is going to be kind of hard to upgrade and we'll get into that in a little bit. But let's jump into graphically intensive games like Cyberpunk 2077. On medium settings without any ray tracing nor frame generation, we can expect around 60 to 70 FPS. And honestly, with games like this, I wanted to see how good of an experience you could get even with ray tracing. Even if we have to use a little bit of frame generation like FSR. So now ray tracing is on at low and with FSR enabled. And we can now expect 50 to 60 FPS. And yes, even though we're getting lower frames, at least we get better quality. But honestly, although this might sound crazy low, and not something I personally would enjoy, some people might actually like this information. So here you are. Forza Horizon is a different story. I genuinely think this game looks really great, especially on 1440p, but at 1080p, it's not that bad. Especially with ultra setting on, we can see 80 to 90 FPS. Now racing games, in my opinion, doesn't really need really high FPS. And even at two digit frames, we can enjoy the game. Now, the next game is Horizon, not Forza Horizon. I know, I made that mistake too. But when we look at this game at low presets without any help from FSR, we can see that we are at 30 to 40 FPS. But again, just for fun, let's turn on FSR to see how much more FPS we can get with frame generation. Now, frame generation's on with the same setting, and 70 FPS is what we'll see. It's a really good boost, and it's over 60 FPS, so you'll have a better time enjoying playing the game. But let's talk about this. Now, how good the performance is, is gonna be pretty subjective in the comments. I know, a lot of people will say, wow, this is better than my PC. A lot of people will be like, this isn't enough for me, which is completely fine, and I think that everyone has their own opinions, and that's, yeah, so it's fine. 
But should you buy these parts to build your PC today? The answer is you can. Yeah, obviously, if the performance I used just saw myself output is more than good enough for you to play games, that was really bad English. However, these are really old parts. I mean, for example, the Ryzen 5 3600 that's in here is well over five years old, and the GTX 1660 Super is a little over five years as well. But I think that if you need a PC right now, and you don't care if you have to buy a brand new PC later along the line, maybe in like two to three years, then go for it. It's not gonna hurt you. This is the performance you'll probably get. But what would I do? The used market for PC parts have become a gold mine in terms of price to performance in the past few years. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy! For the price of a new 1660 Super, you can find something like an RTX 2070 Super, which allows you to be part of the RTX family, welcome, and you will have a much longer driver support, as in there's gonna be more updates for you. But if you want something newer, we can also look at the AMD Radeon 6600 XT, which is two years younger than the 1660 and the 2070 Super. And we could argue all we want about like which GP we should get, AMD, NVIDIA, which one, but what matters is the used market is a really great place to look for good components. Now, I'm not dumb. Shut up. But I know how scary it is to go into the used market, especially because of scans and maybe parts that might be broken, you don't know what to fix or what it is. It's a lot, it's really complicated, I know. But here's the thing. Uh, I was sponsored by Java a while back, and I know if I say, oh, this is pretty trusted, it's gonna be going over your head, and I completely understand. But eBay, which is a company I've never worked with before, they're pretty good with putting consumers first, and if anything goes wrong, you could return it, and eBay will be on your side. Not sponsored, never worked with them before, it'd be great. But if you don't feel comfortable yet, what I can do is make a video about the whole process of buying used parts, building it, troubleshooting, testing games, I could do that. And if you do want that, go ahead and like the video and let me know in the comments. If there's enough, I will do it. Still expensive, $500. And because I'll still have this PC around, if you want any other games tested at 1440p, 1080p, let me know. Uh, I'll make a short and I'll try to tag you guys in it or maybe reply to your comments. I'll, I'll try my best for you to be notified or subscribe so it's easier for you to see. 